Earlier in the week I got sent out some ghillie suits to try out and it made me want to delve into some ghillie crafting fundamentals. So grab a tea, grab a beer and let's get into it. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are in the glorious Northern Ireland. Sun's out, gun's out. So I thought it'd be good to get out into the forest and maybe do a little video on ghillie suits. I'm sure loads of people are changing from winter suits to summer suits. I thought I'd do a video on why your ghillie suits suck. So for having an Instagram full of ghillie suits, I've actually very rarely done tutorials. And this isn't technically a tutorial, it's more just some points. So why does your ghillie suits suck? Big shout out to Scrum Shop who continually support me. They give me a lot of the materials that you see in the video. But also a big shout out to Novrich who has sent me out two ghillie suits to try and review or make content on or give feedback on. Those ghillie suits aren't perfect and I do have some sucky things about those, but more on that later. So why do your ghillie suits suck? So first up, we'll go to the start. People choose the wrong base suit. And why could it be the wrong one? Well, the colors could be off. So to quickly give an example of that, we're in a forest, it's the middle of summertime, a real extreme poor choice of base suit would be to buy a snow suit or Arctic camel. You would stick out a mile and you would have to do a lot of work to it afterwards to get it to fit in. But honing it down just to be a little bit more relative. For me, I try to choose a base that will mean that I have to do as little to no work to that suit as possible. So this is what currently my terrain looks like. We have this big patch of brown, but there's green pretty much everywhere. So let's analyze this area for a second. This is normal head height for me, but whenever I crouch down, a lot more green comes into play and a lot more green fills my vision. So if you've got a certain amount of money and you can only get one suit, my advice would be to get a base suit that suits your terrain for the majority of the year that you play in. If you check back my Instagram or my previous videos and gameplay videos, you will see actually that Ireland has quite a bit of green in it all year round. So for me, it would make sense to get some type of greenish type base suit as opposed to brown. If you check out your area and you find out that nine months a year is predominantly green and two months a year, it's kind of hybrid green and brown and one month of the year is brown, then of course, yeah, try to choose a green base suit. As mentioned before, Norbert sent me out two ghillie suits. I chose the Kreutzotter and the Everglade. Now the Everglade I thought would be really, really good for summertime. And I chose the Kreutzotter leaf suit because I already have the Kreutzotter combats and BDU. And I really wanted to see what the leaf suit would be like. But getting back to base suits, we have the Kreutzotter here, which has quite a bit of brown in it and it suits the brown forest floor, whereas the Everglade obviously sticks out a whole lot more. However, say you're in this terrain and you don't want to lie down the whole time and you want to stand up, is the brown suit going to be the best choice for you? I'm not too sure. For my style of gameplay, I very rarely lie down on the forest floor. There's a few reasons for this. One being that I'm normally very active and running about the place like a headless chicken. And two is because I find by sitting up or standing up, you actually get a better vision of the field and your enemy. So for me buying a base suit that's based on the forest floor, it wouldn't really make sense. It's a far better choice going for something like this where I will be able to stand up and still be camouflaged. To demonstrate this further, we have both base suits and obviously the brown one sticks out way more than the green base. So if you're gonna lie down, should you not have a green suit, 
Well, not necessarily, because if you look down here, there's actually plenty of green about as well. So I pick a base suit that will work really well in as much of the playing environment and for as long throughout the year as possible. Is this base suit perfect? Absolutely not. But the green suit does get you optimally in the right direction. There is zero crafting on this, zero natural veg, and already it's doing a half decent job compared to what a brown suit would do in this environment. The second reason your ghillie suit sucks is because you're crafting your suits in the back garden or at home inside your house. My advice is to get outside as close as possible to the areas you're gonna be gaming in and craft to that area there and then. That way you can see, you can test, and it will be real time crafting. It may even save you loads of time if you spend four hours on a Saturday night in your house crafting, then you take it out the next day and it's totally wrong. You're gonna have to do it all over again. So I've got the quartz order leaf suit and I've made the decision that I wanna craft this base suit for a brown area in this forest down low on the floor. Now I know there's loads of green and it's not gonna be optimum here, but I want to craft it here, for example, on the forest floor. So how do I go about doing that? Pure and simply, I just drop it or I hang it wherever I want it to blend in. And then I do a few tricks just to help me with my crafting. So here I've got my green suit, which is working really well. And I also have just a regular pair of combats in DPM, which are also working really well. None of these three were perfect, but with a few tips and tricks, we can get it a little bit better. Now this pair of DPM trousers cost me 10 pounds off of eBay, so it's actually the cheapest item here. It's just crafted really well. It's a good base to start from, and I'm using really good crafting materials. So how can I make the quartz order that I've just bought a little bit better for this environment? Well, first of all, I've taken it to the environment that I want it to blend to and I've made the choice I want it to blend in with this forest floor. So we look here and it's doing an okay job. You can see the little hints of green matching the ivy and the browns are matching the mud, but we just want to get a wee bit more warmth to it. You can see that the leaves here are all pretty warm so we need to start adding that. So a quick tip on just to see whether this is gonna be a waste of space or not. What I do is I get some of the leaves and I drop it on the quartz order here and we'll see if it blends any better. I do this before I do any crafting just to make sure that it's the right choice of base suit. I've literally came to another part of the forest floor. I haven't grabbed from the forest floor right beside the trousers because if I did that, then it would ruin the blend because I've just cleared everything away. So we'll grab it from a slightly different area just so the forest floor around gives a good baseline of what it should look like. So I've added some twigs. There's a big branch that kind of fell in there, but we can use coconut rope to mimic these larger twigs. We can use some raffia or thinner coconut rope for the thinner twigs. But I've added loads of the dry leaves, which you see all over here. There's even pine cones here, but we aren't really gonna add them. But the majority of the things that we're gonna add and try to replicate are these kind of leaves, these dead leaves. Or the other thing that I'll do is I'll just fold a bit that has none of the leaves or the crafting on it and I'll just compare and contrast. To my eyes this is sticking out a little bit more than here so this is what we want this to look like and it shouldn't take that long. As mentioned this is made by Norwich and actually his mesh, if we get a real good close-up of that, his mesh is actually quite thick so it's really really easy to work with cable ties. 
Coolio, so we've got the right base. It's predominantly brown for this lovely brown and ivy floor. We're going to craft in situ so we could see exactly what our forest floor is going to look like. At the minute, it's sticking out a wee bit. It's not doing an, a horrible job, but it's just not perfect. So we want to make it slightly better. So let's get into our next topic, which is why do your ghillies suck? because you're using the wrong materials. Materials wise, I'm going to be using some cottons and of course Le Covert's Oakmaster garlands. These here are really, really good colors, but they absorb water really nice. They reflect light really nice. And we will do a test once it gets dark on the IR capabilities of these suits. So hopefully the reflectance on these should be quite good for nighttime as well. The cottons are pure and simple. If I wet them, they go dark just like leaves so make sure that you're using decent materials when you're crafting your suits make sure that the colors are right i'm just looking about trying to get this stuff to kind of sort of match and we are finding a nice mix of colors here with these leaves so we're getting the warms the colds and then the kind of beigey light bleach kind of look so hopefully whenever we add these cottons to this it will start to look a lot better the good thing is we can do it and see how it looks and if we don't like it we can take it back off immediately and we don't waste too much time on it rather than starting with the combats i'm going to start with the balaclava So for the twigs, you can use raffia. Um, I'm going to use some of this wool, however, just to try and get it to color match a wee bit better. the coverts bookmaster garlands in nano screen and it has slightly better reflectance properties than cotton but if we catch some of the light on this it just gives a nicer reflection it's already in these pre laser cut shaped garlands and you just trim them off and same as usual just get your cable tie and attach it on So looking at the forest floor, the nano screen is doing a really good job at replicating the leaves. It's blending in really, really nicely with this sort of lightish color. So I've done a little bit of crafting to the balaclava. Here is the Kreuzotter without anything on it. And here it is with a little bit of crafting. So quartz order, DPM crafted, and quartz order crafted. The Novarich textile team have done a really good job at getting the colors right in their fake leaves. However, I don't really like attaching the fake leaves because they're pretty darn big. They're really, really good for going for that there almost retro sneaky leaves look if you're into that but for me they're just a wee bit too big now does that mean that they're unusable nope what i like to do is peel them off the stem and then cable tie them the same way as the cotton so rather than getting a big giant leaf 
it'll add slightly more of a 3D depth to it. Same with the grains on these lime leaves. They aren't horrible, but I just don't like sticking loads of these on my suit. It'll make your suit look very, very uniform because they will all be the same shape. What I do is I peel them off, clump them up and cable tie that bit on. Each time you do that and peel it off the stem, you will get a completely different shape than the one than before. So it will add totally different reflections and help break up your suit from looking really really uniform of 50 leaves on one suit. So here we have the Kreutzotter bottoms which are uncrafted and they aren't doing a particularly horrible job but this is the Kreutzotter with a little bit of crafting on and it is doing a way way better job. One thing to mention is that the combat here on the left are laid completely flat, whereas the crafted balaclava is actually a bit of a mound. It's very hard to tell that it's a 3D element. The green suit on the right is doing pretty good up in the ivy. We've got the Kreutzotter crafted in the middle. We've got the very cheap DPM in the far corner and we've got the Kreutzotter uncrafted at the front, which as I say, isn't doing an awful job, but just by spending about 20 minutes adding a little bit of cotton nano screen and a few cords of color correct wool, it's helping blend. to use this wool sporadically rather than clumping it up I'm using it just at a strand at a time just to show you another example of potentially a wrong base I've gone to another part of the forest which has all these lovely orange leaves which aren't all that dark so the coat solder in this environment we would have to have a lot of work done to it. You would have to get lots of those golden warm tones and add it to it. And on the forest floor here, there's not too much green. So the coat solder in this type of scenario may not be best. Even when we come back further, the coat solder still doesn't blend with these lovely warm tones. But just because we're in one particular part of the forest doesn't mean that quartz order won't work in a particularly different part of the forest. Which brings me into the next point. Why your ghillies suck? Because you're hiding in the wrong position. So position or location is the next one. If you're gonna be sitting up in this arena then you potentially want a green suit but does that mean that a brown suit won't work in this location well potentially not the green is obviously optimally better however if you have a brown suit you'll still find places to hide So if you're absolutely stuck with a little bit of experience and knowing your suit and how your suit looks in different locations, even in this dark brown suit, you'll still be able to find places. So you've chose the most optimal base suit for your environment. You've done a lot of crafting on it to get it to blend and match better but if you're in the wrong position 
you're going to stick out like a sore thumb. So my advice is to get your suit anytime you're taking the dog for a walk or you're in the forest or wherever you're wanting to use your suit and see where it works best, see where it works mediocre and most importantly see where it doesn't work because it's going to give you away. All the money you've spent, all the time you've spent, it's not going to work. So your ghillie suit is going to suck. Another thing about position, just be careful about silhouetting yourself and really try to bear that in mind whenever choosing your position. If you look in the floor here, you can see my ghillie suit is perfectly blending very, very well. However, if I lift that up, it's creating a big dark shape just because the light is behind. So what we're gonna do is Put the same suit in two locations so here is what the everglade looks like with a light silhouette however if we change position and be very aware of our silhouette whenever we choose wisely we will hide easier we use this kind of shrubbery bush to be a background for our silhouette blocker, but you can use elevated positions like cliff faces or hills. And lastly, the reason your ghillie suits suck is because too much movement. We have our lovely model here who is nicely hidden, but as soon as he starts waving his arms, you can spot them straight away. So this can tie in with your position as well. And here's a tip for hiding. So loads of people try to hide behind trees, but they won't be able to see their opponents. So they're gonna to have to look around quite a bit, which adds lots and lots of movement. You can see here, our lovely assistant is having to look around the tree big time to get any type of good vision on the playing field whereas if he relied on his camouflage and came out front he's still he's actually blending a lot better because there's no silhouette he's using the tree as his background but also if he wants to look to the left or to the right he could do that literally with just his eyeballs because he's got almost a 180 degree field of view so that brings that video to a close. Although I think I'm gonna do a few more videos. I've kind of laid some foundation work and I wanna to add to that. I want to explain some things a wee bit better and delve into them. What I'm trying to do is use my knowledge to create some sort of gilly algebra. So it means once you have the knowledge, you should be able to get your own answers. It doesn't matter where in the world you are, what budget you're on, what season it is, you'll be able to take the information and come up with your own results. I'm pretty confident as a colorist, I'm trained in it, especially for a video. I understand color, I'm starting to understand perception and trickery, and although I'm not an expert in it by any means, I do have some good tips and tricks that I'll be able to forward on to you guys. If you're interested in any of the products that I've used, the crafting materials are from Skirm Shop, and the ghillie suits that were sent out were from Novrich. They are the Gen 2. One thing that I really like about it is that it's sold as individual items. So if you just want the jacket, you could buy just the jacket. If you just want the balaclava, you could buy that or the ghillie pants. Or you can get all three, but you could mix and match them. So you could have three different camos should you wish to do that. I typically try to keep the top half of me greenish and the bottom half brownish. It means if I'm seated, my legs are on the brown forest floor, but my body's up in the sort of green area of the terrain but that's for me if you've watched this video then hopefully you've got some knowledge for you to make a better choice if you want some more information on the Novarich website i do have an affiliate link down below you can click on that and it gives you the full spec sheet or alternatively go to true mobster's second channel i think it's true mobster 2 go on that and he has a complete review of all the features of this suit. In the meantime, I have loads more videos to put out, so make sure you have subscribed, make sure you've hit that notification bell. It's very important because it will let you know that I have uploaded another video and will hopefully bring it to your YouTube feed. Anyway, I gotta go. Peace.